Days of Christ. As we prepare for Reformation Sunday, we look at the Mighty Fortress, which is our closing hymn. You'll notice if you look in your hymnal that it has it has two versions, 656 and 657. The one that is most well known within our church body is 657. 656 is uh, what's called a little bit more. One is smoother and one is syncopated or kind of jumpy. They're both the tunes are very similar. They just have a different uh, um, meter, I believe, and and uh, or maybe not the meter, just the the uh, tempo is different. A mighty fortress is our God. Mighty fortress is our God was most likely written sometime between 1527 and 1529, a period that saw an epidemic in Wittenberg. A serious illness befell Martin Luther, 14, who lived from 1483 to 1546. Turkish forces threatened the German borders, further threatening threats from Catholic armies and, the, and theological attacks from both Catholics and more radical Protestants. The human uh, the hymn is often called the Battle Hymn of the Reformation, but in Luther's day it was thought that of a different in different terms and can be seen from the heading of the Augsburg, Augsburg broadsheet of 1529, a hymn of comfort, something that our is so, was sorely needed at that time. The hymn retained this des, des designation at least until the middle of the 17th century at which time Lutheran hymns, hymnals took their versified psalms, which were traditionally placed together in separate section in their own, the separate, separated them from various topical categories. The placement of this hymn in a section dealing with the church and the word of God made it easier to think of as a polemical hymn. The hymn has often been translated into English, but the translations most frequent f found are Thomas Carlyle's 1831 text, A Safe Stronghold of Our God. We'll, we'll know in Britain, well known in Britain, and Frederick H. Hedges' version, Beginning a Mighty Fortress is Our God, a bulwark never failing, which is a more popular in America. The Missouri Synod has historically used neither but rather a translation from 1868 Church Book of the General Council, a theologically conservative Lutheran body. In some ways, the translation in LSB, which stays quite close to the German, is a bit wooden, but it is sanctified by long use of incentive with, with many church members having memorized it. It is set to Lutheran's original version of the tune, uh, the translation of 657 uh, and from 90, is from 1978. It was introduced in Missouri Senate in 1982. Martin Luther translated several psalms into German, rhetorical German, and most follow the psalm text fairly closely. For example, from depths of woe I cry to thee, hymn 607, a paraphrase of Psalm 130, and may God bestow on us his grace, hymn 823, the German rendering of Psalm 67. But Luther is rarely content to speak solely in the words of a psalmist. The gospel message is so much a part of him that he cannot resist bringing the New Testament into the Psalms, as in may, may God bestow on us his grace, where not only God's saving power is made known, in the nations, but specifically Christ's riches. This method is followed by other Lutheran poets. Uh, lift, lift up your heads, you mighty gates, 340 and 341, for example. And so Lutheran psalms, psalm paraphrases, offer the theological richness not found in those of Calvinists and British reformers, who insist that their psalms being the very word of God, be translated literally as possible. In England, it would not. It was not until 1719 that Isaac Watts broke with the tradition in, in his Psalm of David imitated in the language of the New Testament. A mighty fortress is, is our God, is, is headed, Psalm, headed, Psalm 46 is many, in many prints, of the Reform Reformation era, and so it begins 
with a paraphrase of the psalm of the first verse. So Psalm 46, 1 reads, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. The Luther's hymn, a mighty fortress is our God, a trusty shield and weapon. He helps us free from every need. He hath on he that hath us now or taken. I think that's enough about the mighty fortress. Probably more than you want to know about it. I think I will read our Old Testament text, and then tomorrow we'll read the rest of the psalm and our, and our uh, New Testament text for the for next. Our Old Testament text, because it's a short one for for, for the Reformation Sunday, is Revelation fourteen six to seven, because it has this idea of looking to the the, the end. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with. This is Revelation 14, 6 to 7. Overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim the, those who dwell on earth to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to, because of the hour his judgment has come and the worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and, and the springs of water. Uh, in our church year, uh, Reformation Sunday is typically celebrated the last Sunday closest to October the 31st. The only thing is, our, this this year, November the 1st is All Saints Day, so we're going to celebrate All Saints Day on that. And we'll celebrate uh, Reformation Sunday a little bit earlier. We close in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We ask you to be with us now as we go forth seeking to share your love with others. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.